Hello friends, in this session we will discuss projection of solids from it. Projection of solids prism has been discussed in the past uh, 3 to 4 5 sessions. If you wish to see those uh, prism problem videos, you can check the description box along with the questions it has been shared in the uh, description box. We discussed the prism based on uh, two condition axis is inclined to HP and parallel to VP axis is inclined to VP and parallel to HP uh, different conditions also we discussed the positions of the solid like uh, edges on HP corner is on HP and then longer edges on HP rectangular face is on HP so we discussed different conditions of the uh, prism likewise we will discuss uh, more number of problems related to pramit so first of all what what is pramit so at the base we will have one plane surface if the plane surface is hexagon we can say the name of pramit as hexagonal pramit if the base of the prism is pentagon plane surface we can say this is pentagonal pramit likewise we can name depends on the uh, base of the pramit here it is for an example we have chosen for uh, discussion is this is hexagonal uh, pramit because the base is the hexagon plane surface. What about this point? O is the nomenclature of this is apex or vertex. Uh, all the corners of this uh, hexagon is connected by a slant edges. What is slant edge here? OA is one slant edge. Similarly, OB, OC, OD, OE, OF are the slant edges of the pramit. Now let us discuss uh, one question related to hexagonal pyramid. Read the question. A hexagonal pyramid side of uh, base 25 mm and axis 50 mm long rests with one of its edges on HP and its axis is inclined at an angle of 30 degree to HP and parallel to BP draw its projection. So clearly given it is one of its edges on HP. If one of its edges on HP, what is the position of the uh, base? base plane surface is hexagon so this edge is on HP if this edge is on HP after the rotation of 90 degree in clockwise direction of the horizontal plane this two edges will become perpendicular to XY what are the two edges uh, this edge and also similarly this edge become perpendicular to XY so it will be easy for us this is the top view and you may have a doubt whether I can able to see all the corners of this uh, all the corners of this pan hexagonal plane surface a b c d e f can be seen from the top view i will share one more uh, uh, photo you can check it here uh, this is the top view uh, i can able to see all these corners this is also the hexagonal pyramid i can see all the corners of the six corners of the pyramid from the top view okay so with this we will move on to the solution of this uh, problem draw the x y and what is the position of uh, hexagon? This is the position of hexagon as per the condition. One edge is on HP. After the rotation, those edges become uh, perpendicular to XY reference line. Now you give a name uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. In case of prism, we will have uh, two hexagonal surface. One at the top and another one at the base or the bottom face. Okay, here being a pyramid we will have only one plane surface at the base and what is the use of uh, uh, this what is the difference between this pyramid and prism if you fail to connect all these uh, corners through the apex or vertex it looks like a prism so always make sure that you join all the slant edges to the point called apex or vertex O. Okay. So you can draw the diagonal first fc similarly you can draw connect all these uh, corners as like diagonal ad then e p e. and what is the center point here it is o so if you draw a hexagonal plane surface by connecting all these corners through a yes, point o or a vertex or apex it is it looks like a Pyramid. If you fail to join all these corners to this uh, point O, it's a prism. So you should understand the difference between prism and pyramid. If it is a pyramid, all the corners also visible, and I can see the 
apex or vertex the center point O it has been connected by these slant edges from all the corners what are these slant edges OA, OB, OC, OD are these slant edges it can be visible from the top view now the procedure is uh, similar to the prism now I can extend the projectors I can extend the projectors from all the corners and complete the base of the hexagonal pyramid what is the base and you can join this uh, base afterwards normally we do uh, draw the axis at the center of the from the point O we can draw the axis now the axis is exactly lying on the corner C and F is exactly on the axis so no need to draw the representation of axis we can because this is visible visible from the uh, front view so it has to be drawn as continuous thick lines what is the height of this axis length is 50 mm axis length is 50 mm now you can join the remaining corners by slant edges and one more thing you have to be uh, careful this 50 mm is the axis length this slant edges differ, differ from this 50 mm this length will be differ from which one this 50 mm so don't use uh, 50 mm for completing the slant edge of the pyramid so always use axis is 50 mm so this length is varied from the axis length the slant edges now i can give a name if an observer is standing here i can able to see b c d if an observer is standing here he can able to see b c d a f e is invisible so o dash is the apex or vertex so o dash as uh, a dash is invisible b dash is visible Okay, so that's why a dash is marked in the bracket then c dash is visible f dash should be denoted in the bracket next point is d dash is visible e dash is invisible so that's why it is denoted in the bracket okay with this uh, you can uh, complete the simple position of the hexagonal pyramid this is the simple position of hexagonal pyramid now i have to make an axis as inclined at an angle of 30 degree to hp that is the axis this O dash C dash F dash this edge is an axis so you can take any point on the XY reference line or any point on the XY reference line you mark a 30 degree inclination without any specific length you draw a thin line 30 degree inclination thin line now you know what is the uh, length of this O dash C dash F dash that has to be transferred on this transfer to this inclination line 30 degree before that what is the distance you have to reproduce the same simple position front view b dash a dash to d dash e dash you can measure using scale draw the midpoint exactly on this inclination line okay so how it has to be represented and make sure that one edge is on hp so here i am having a b e d always uh, we will prefer right side edge if, because if i tilt the left side use the left side edge it may touch this front view okay so always use left side edge here the left edge is ed it should touch xy because this edge is on hp now i have to reproduce this same uh, front view here on the in inclination line of 30 degree with respect to hp and give a notation uh, as it is in these simple position front view this is simple position front view after the completion of this simple position uh, reproducing the simple position of front view in the step number three we can extend the projectors from this uh, front view as well as from this top view step number two and three both the uh, respective corners will meet at one point for an example now this is corner a a and e lies on the same projector here it is a dash you can extend the projectors both will meet at this point make it as a1 then b dash also lies on the same projector here this is uh, corner b so you can extend the projectors from uh, corner b this is the meeting point we can mark it as b1 next one it is c dash so here it is uh, corner c I can extend the projector from this C both meeting at this point mark it as C1 then F dash 
okay f dash you can extend the projectors from this uh f this meeting at this point make it as f1 left out is d and e you can extend the projectors from d dash and e dash here it is e here it is d you can mark it as respective corners d1 and e1 final is o dash now you can extend the projector from the top view o both is meeting at this point make it as o1 now what we did in the prism join all the boundaries join the boundaries of this uh, top view by continuous thick lines what are all the boundaries here a1 b1 b1 c1 check it a1 b1 then b1 c1 c1 o1 o1 f1 f1 a1 is the boundary of the particular view that we join by means of continuous thick lines okay after the completion of this uh, top view now we have to identify what are all the hidden lines or hidden uh, edges from the top view okay so if you can observe is standing here if an observer is standing here it is uh, this corner this not this is not a corner this is an edge ed is the edge it will be invisible from the top view and as per the question also we can say one of its edges on hp if the edge is lying on hp it will that particular edge will be invisible from the top view so this d1 and e1 that is the reason it is denoted in the represented in the bracket because of invisible in the top view it has to be marked by means of a hidden lines okay and after marking this uh, hidden line what about the slant edges o dash a dash b dash if you are an observer is standing here i can clearly see this o dash a dash b dash so i can join o a1 o b1 by a continuous thick lines before that we, we can complete the shape of hexagon what is the uh, shape of hexagon six sides we already completed a1 f1 a1 b1 b1 c1 e1 e1 what about e1 and f1 e1 and f1 as the same procedure bottom off of the what is the bottom off of the uh, front view this c dash d dash e dash f dash is the bottom off of the base edge in the front view okay top of is a dash b dash and c dash top bottom of is c dash d dash e dash f dash it is always invisible from the top view so f dash f1 and e1 can be joined by means of hidden lines similarly c dash d dash so c d is invisible from the top view now the hexagon is completed the base is completed base is the hexagon surface it is completed now we can go for slant edges o a o a dash o b dash will be visible from the top view what as a dash o dash b dash can be visible from the top view it has to be joined by means of continuous thick lines so o1 a1 o1 b1 is visible for us from the top view o dash will be visible but this d dash e dash is invisible from the top view so we can say this bottom slant edge this slant edge o dash d dash e dash is invisible for an observer from the top view it has to be joined by means of hidden lines o1 e1 o1 e1 so this is the final answer of this question it is very easy as like uh, prism projection of solids only thing you have to remember two changes instead of rectangular faces here the triangular faces and in the front view wherever you are drawing the base you have to join all the corners through the apex or vertex if you missed these uh, slant edges o a o b if you missed to connect all the slant edges to the point o it will be prism then what happens top view looks like a prism then front view looks like pyramid if you fail to connect all the corners or all the slant edges to the apex or vertex means then your entire concept will be wrong top view looks like a prism then uh, front view looks like a pyramid so always ensure whether you have joined all the plant edges to the apex or vertex point called o okay this has to be make sure that whether you completed or
Still, if you have any uh, difficulties in solving this particular problem, you can uh, give a comment uh, to the uh, comment box. And 